While the US stock market has been receiving the benefits of the global quantitative easing increase over the last few weeks, certain stocks haven't been so fortunate. While China's central bank injected the largest amount of money into the markets ever in history, something very wild happened in Hong Kong. The only issue is that nobody really knows why. But don't worry, because that couldn't happen here, could it? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what has happened in the Hong Kong stock market. Then we're going to look at other issues that are happening in China right now. I think it's important to look at all the geopolitical issues, all of the financial issues that are going on, not just in one country, but as many as we can possibly dig up the info on. So first let's begin by taking a look at the markets themselves. I want to begin by looking at the US markets. You can see on Thursday's trading session that the US markets are all in the green yet again. Over the last few weeks, they have performed very well from their low points. They are moving closer and closer towards their record highs. We'll see if they can break any of these resistance levels which they are at currently. We'll see if that continues. But today is really to talk about Hong Kong. Hong Kong and China stocks shoot up after Beijing vows tax cuts to boost manufacturers and small businesses. This was on Tuesday. You saw how China tried to do what they could on every single level to boost their economy and their markets. They engaged in tax cuts. They made the lending requirements much easier. They lowered the reserve ratios for these institutions, which allows them to loan out more money and, of course, take more risk. And they they injected the most amount of money they have ever in history into their markets. They are doing this on every single level because this market and this economy needs the stimulation. This was the article talking about the injection of money. China just injected a record amount of money to stimulate its economy. On Wednesday, the Chinese central bank injected $83 billion worth into the banking system, the highest ever recorded for a single day. If this goes on for a couple more days, this will be the most ever in history. At present, it is the peak of the tax period and the total liquidity of the banking system is declining rather quickly. The central bank is trying to make excuses for what's happening here but of course the fallout that they're experiencing has been happening for the last year so there is no way that you can cover this up except by printing more and more money and using every possible method in order to try and stimulate it but it's not going to work either way because when the money is fleeing it's fleeing you're gonna have to print a lot more than 83 billion dollars i'll tell you that much but this is the news of the day. A bunch of stocks in Hong Kong crashed 70% without warning and no one really knows why. That, I believe, is the most important part. Stocks crash. Flash crashes happen. Algorithmic trading has ruined the markets. But they can pinpoint the reason why this happened. But in this case today, nobody knows. Sudden sell-off hits Hong Kong stocks $4.77 billion vaporized. And this is what happened here as a result of, I'm sure, algorithmic trading. But the reason why they did such things, there are some theories as to why this happened. I'll show you in a minute, but nothing has been pointed out specifically. And of course, there are those individuals out there who will say, this couldn't happen to me. I live in this country or that country, and it's just Hong Kong. This could never happen over here. Well, a number of stocks tanked sharply without warning earlier today on the Hong Kong equity market. It's the fourth largest market in the world. The market route left investors with no time to exit their positions, leaving them with losses amounting to as much as $4.77 billion in a matter of minutes. People think that they'll be able to do this or that. What happened to all the money that was in these particular stocks? Will you be able to get out in time? There's a Bloomberg article here making reference to this property developer. Their shares plunged as much as 80% 
on Thursday afternoon. What's interesting about this company is that they have $350 million in debt due to mature today. So perhaps that had something to do with it, but we'll see, we'll follow it. I'll bring you any new information I do find. This is a list of some of the biggest moves in the day and you can see 81%, 73, 68 and so on. These are big companies. It's not some random company out there. These are big establishments and we're seeing the price Price falling this dramatically even though we had record liquidity into the system right now globally there had been 15 trillion dollars printed into this corrupt financial system and yet we still have these kind of problems of course algorithms have ruined the market you can't justify the use of these trading programs because they make things worse and worse every single day we're hearing about some sort of flat crash how stocks needed to be halted for one reason or another this is what happens when you allow these computer driven systems to run free Falling down, a group of stocks plummeted in Hong Kong on Thursday afternoon. You could just see the chart, what happened here in such a rapid drop that was experienced. Take a look at the chart. I mean, it is almost instantaneous for most of these stocks and it's not a coincidence when this happens. Expect this to happen on a major widespread scale during the next financial crisis. Just look at the VIX that happened in January 2018 into February. You can see what happened into stocks as a result of that. It was almost instantaneous, these drops that were experienced. Some analysts pointed to possible share pledge and cross shareholding practices of the company's shareholders to secure loans. Others suggested a $350 million bond debt due to mature today might be the trigger. There is a worry that they will not be able to repay the bonds, which triggered fears over default. If the company defaults, it may not have money to continue its business. Being a shareholder, you are under the risk that the company might go broke. A lot of people don't realize this. They believe that these companies don't go bankrupt. And of course, their stocks are totally fine and secure, but nothing could be further from the truth. It goes on to talk about the spokespeople from these particular companies. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what's happening right now. The situation in China isn't what it was back in, let's say, 2017 and prior. We have problems. The problems are mounting. You could see that the real estate situation is getting worse. In this example, this one particular company is offering discounts up to 30% at their new offering. You could see in the picture here below. And of course, it's not just this one company. There have been several examples, some of which I've shown here, others which I've read about, and it's only going to get worse until something is fixed at the root. They can print as much money as they want and this is only going to make things worse in the end. That's what it does. One good indicator of the global economy is using the Baltic Dry Index. Many people have pointed to this in the past. It's only one. You can't just point to one index and believe that this is a tell-all. Everything you need to know is going to be explained in this one single indicator. It's not like that. There isn't one indicator. But when you look at this, it is very telling that throughout 2018, we have seen the decline in the Baltic Dry particularly in the second half into 2019. In fact, just in this last peak that we've seen here, it has dropped 17%. So if you look at where it was right at the end of the year up until today, it has dropped 17% from what I gather. And this tells me that it is just more of the same cycles happening over and over again. We've seen many other indicators popping up. I'll show you a few here. Looking at LNG, liquid natural gas, this has come down significantly from its peak back in what appears to be December. December of 2018 dropping like a stone. You'll see that in this chart. Chinese iron ore imports shrunk by 3.2% the last three months through November. This is the year over year growth just going down into the negative right here. This is just one example after another. When I get new information, I bring it to you. For those who are interested in new information, this is the type of data that you need to constantly be pulling. We can't just look at one or two indicators. You can't just say the price has gone up. You can't just use your opinion. You actually need to look at all of these indicators 
others and you're constantly on a daily basis judging it okay some people they don't understand that and unfortunately if they have a retirement account it's probably gone uh, in the end it's going to be uh, quite troublesome for a lot of people and there's only so much we can do right that's all so if you found the video informative please give me a thumbs up when you give me a thumbs up you're supporting this channel so i do appreciate when you do that it's just the one button if you click it it helps me out and of course if you want the financial education that was left out of the school system intentionally so that you would always need to go back so you wouldn't dig into the truth and you wouldn't figure out who's really controlling all of these systems that you see today well these two books have everything that you need from the foundation all the way from step one all the way up to figuring out how to make money reduce your debt and so on check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com